Greetings, fellow seekers of truth, wisdom, and light. This is Reverend Elliot, your friendly neighborhood esoteric practitioner, coming to you live tonight from the city of New York, where we get together every Wednesday at 11 Eastern, 10 Central, 9 Mountain, and 8 Pacific to look through the magical window of the tarot. And here we are in a sweltering uh, mid-August night. My gosh, it's 72 degrees out there. What am I going to do? <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, it's been weird here. It's been really cool, man. Cool. Yeah. It's cool. I keep, gets any cooler, I'm going to go walking around saying daddy -o and playing bongos. The, uh, this happened, this, the, the summers have been pretty mild in the last few years here. I, I you know, I'm, don't want to get into any political stuff about that, but uh, the point is that even though that we had a few days where the temperature hit a, a little over 90, uh, it always went down into the 70s at night, so it's livable, it's bearable, and I enjoy it, and I have no problem, and I'll tell you why. I, I have no problem with being hot in the summer, and I just don't like being cold in the winter. I mean, I would rather, I crave warmth. I just don't want to be cold. I hate cold. When, when I was a little boy, we would go on vacation in, in, in August, the hottest time, and we'd go swimming in a beautiful lake upstate, and I'd come out shivering. I just don't like cold. But that said, the the thing is, uh, heat is a problem for a lot of people I know because when they go to work or when they go to go shopping, uh, they go visiting people, everything is air conditioned. You get on the subway, it's air conditioned. You get, you know, that used to be one thing that you, we were sure of in New York was that you'd, you'd sweat your head off in, in the subway. Uh, the buses are all air conditioned. Everything is air conditioned now. Uh, the school next door, I mean, I live right next to a high school. Now we get, the high schools, school, you remember, we all got the summer off and we'd go play. And that reason we got the summer off was uh, for the same reason that the theater would close down in the summer. It's hot, but not anymore, you see. Every window in the school building has an air conditioner in it now. Now, when you do that, you see, if you work all day in an air-conditioned office or you ride the air-conditioned buses and subways or even the taxis are air-conditioned, and then you go home and it's warm because you don't have an air conditioner on, that can, that can really be a shocking and abrupt change and it can be extremely uncomfortable. On the other hand, I, being essentially a hermit, I don't care if it's warm here. I mean, it's it's not it's no big deal. It's not hot enough to make my candles droop. That that now that sounds like a euphemism, I know, but it's not. Keep your minds out of the gutter. It's not. Uh, but there was there was a summer that was very uh, bad, and the candles drooped. <laughs> the candles, my, my candles just were just down. But you know, yeah, we've had a lot of hot times here. But as I've said before, I live in an ancient building. Uh, from uh, from the 19th century, and it was uh, uh, designed for cross ventilation, and that's what we've got, man, cross ventilation. But I can understand. See, we, there came a time years ago when we would put the air conditioning on. We used to be able to hold out to like July 4th without air conditioning, and then it would get brutal. But once you turn it on, you see, you can't stop. You have to keep it going. And 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 I, I mean, there's. I hear air conditioners going out the window. I can hear them through in the backyard window, even when it's 72 degrees out. So, you know, that's, and I understand why, because we're accustomed to that. I personally don't like air conditioning and I have no problem with being warm in the, in the winter. I have no, in the summer, I have no problem with being a little cold in the winter, but I don't like cold. So I will have blankets and I will have all kinds of stuff going. You know, it's uh, cold is more dangerous than uh, than heat, apparently. But I don't, I don't like. Uh, let me put it this way: I crave warmth. <laughs> I do. I just crave warmth, and this is my time of year. Now we're rounding up into September, which is hurricane season, and that should be fun. That's another thing the news was wonderful with. Often I mention that the news will try to just spend all of its time scaring you. There's a headline in New York today that says New York could. Now, I want you to remember that word. New York could be battered by 11 hurricanes this season. And then again, it could not, I suppose, is what that implies. Uh, I, I spent many, many years in the uh, uh, news business. I was about to say news racket. 
but I'm too genteel for that. I spent many years in the news uh, dodge. And let me tell you something. You can ignore any story with the word could in the headline. Just don't bother with it because that's designed just to scare you. Now, speaking of scared, I just I wanted to commemorate something that uh, kind of I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is <laughs> I missed a few shows because I was ill, but it, I, in 2013, after I'd been doing the show for like a year and a half. And speaking of air conditioning, right, it, it, in late July of 2013, I started shivering. It was very cold. And I asked my wife if she would be so kind as to turn down the air conditioning. And she informed me that the air conditioning wasn't on and I was freezing and the air conditioning wasn't on. So we checked my temperature. We got the good old thermometer out and I was running a temperature north of 103. And we immediately hide our little selves off to the hospital, which began a uh, very bizarre odyssey that found me in the hospital at least a week, it might've been two weeks. I, I know, but they, they put me in a room. They, 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 they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They were angry with me. That's the one thing. So I, my, my faith in the medical sciences started to break down at that point when one doctor yelled at me, you're not presenting properly. It's, you know, I'm sitting there dying. You know, I'm throwing up at every move. I'm, I've got 103 fever. I don't know what's going on. And uh, they never did find out exactly what happened except that I had picked up an infection a couple of weeks earlier, I had had kidney stone surgery, routine surgery. Don't even, you know, every time I hear routine surgery, the only thing that could go wrong went wrong. Something wasn't sterilized properly and I got sick. I picked up a bacteriological infection. To this day, they don't know what it was, but they gave up on me. They absolutely gave up on me. They put me in a room where everybody went to die. There was a, a, a nice young nurse there. She was obviously in the beginning of her nurse career and she couldn't hack it. She went crazy. She started screaming because everybody came, everyone in that room died. And then they would just replace them with somebody else who died. And I was in that room, that room, right? Hooked up to machinery that was beeping and playing video games and all that. And I had this bizarre notion that I wasn't going to die. I wasn't quite ready for that. So I did, you know, I, 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 got, I marshaled my mental energy, which is important. This is one of the reasons that we really, it's a mistake, I think, for humans not to learn the skill of meditating, because it's a very difficult thing. And it's easy to give up on meditating. When you meditate, you try to clear your mind and your mind doesn't like to be cleared. Your mind is going to rebel. Your mind is going to attack you. Uh, Alistair Crowley wrote a whole diary of his working on trying to meditate and he would make a notation in it every time he, he lost his concentration. He called it a break and he had more uh, breaks every moment, every few minutes uh, until he started having fewer and fewer breaks. And then he knew he had mastered the meditation when there were no breaks. Well, I haven't mastered it myself, but at that point, I just, I, I had a, I had a motivation which is I didn't want to die. So I marshaled my strength and my meditation and I took control of my breathing and I took control of my respiration. And then I think to the shock of the, the people there, I started playing games with the machine that I was hooked up to. It was just doing this beep, beep, you know, and, 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 the, and the, the little thing was moving up and down. It was, you know, like, like the, the sonar in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea or something. And I started to play games with it. I started to make it move the way I wanted it to move. And, and one, one nurse knew what I was doing and came over and gave me that, uh, you know, caught with your hand in the cookie jar look and said, you're playing around with us, aren't you? But I know you're sick, so what are you doing? You know, and I just said, I'm, I am keeping my mind busy so that I don't die like everybody else in this room. You know, they were just wheeling them out. Man. Yeah, they were literally wheeling them out and wheeling new ones in. You know, you know what that does to your mind when they stick you in a room where you're supposed to die? I mean, right then and there, many people would just give up. But I didn't. I couldn't. I wasn't ready to. I'd only been doing this show for a year and a half at that time, and I wouldn't be here now to talk to you if I had given up. And there were, you know, I got through, I pulled through that. They had to stick a uh, uh, something in my arm 
to run a tube into my heart to feed me a certain kind of antibiotic, which they lovingly call the drug of final resort. You know, you, you love hearing that kind of stuff. Couldn't they just be a little more upbeat, a little more positive? But they, 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 they did that. And uh, that was, I've talked about that before. And I, I may even have that in my website. I know I have it in one of my books. I, uh, it, it's, it's in a very uncomfortable procedure where they stick this thing up your arm and run it into your heart. And I said to the, uh, the one of the, there were two doctors, they were uh, doing this. And I said, would it help you any if I just went to sleep? And they started laughing. I said, trust me, you're not going to go to sleep. I said, okay. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, they were waking me up and saying, how did you do that? How did you do that? I've been doing this for 25 years. Nobody's ever fallen asleep while we do this. This is painful and uncomfortable. What did you do? And I explained to them it was just a matter of mind power. And I mentioned my book, Bending Spoons with the Mind and Other Miracles of Mind Power. Although I think I left the bending spoons part out because, you know, scientists don't like that. <laughs> it bothers them. So I just simply said, I wrote a book about mind power and you wanted, you, you didn't want me in your way while you were doing this. So I went to sleep, you know. And they said, this is amazing. This could be a big breakthrough. We have to discuss this with you. Now, of course, that was uh, 10 years ago this week. And I have not heard from them. You know that they weren't going to talk to me. They didn't care. They, they were just shocked that something out of the ordinary happened. And within 45 minutes of walking out of the room, they convinced themselves that it was their imagination, I'm sure. But the point that I'm trying to make is I did some... Some heavy duty reflecting, uh, reflecting, reflecting, there's a good word, reflectioning on life because they stuck me in a room where they expected me to die. They had told my wife that I was going to die. I mean, everybody was prepared for me to be dead. It was, this was 10 years ago this week. And I fooled them, I hope. Could you imagine? What if I did die? Ooh, that's eerie. That's creepy. And then I'm just a ghost. But I know I'm not a ghost because I stubbed my toe the other day and brother, that hurt. So you see, the thing is, I'm making my way gently to this point, which is don't let other people, whether it be the news or doctors or friends, don't let them put ideas in your head that you don't want. Don't let them put ideas in your head that you reject. Because even the slightest bit of doubt, even the slightest bit of, uh, uh, of questioning at the wrong time can kill you. Now, that's not to say you must never question things. Of course, you question things. You question things all the time, especially authority, folks. Think for yourself and question authority. And if they get angry that you're questioning authority, so what? You know, but... Don't, they, they made, see what they did for me to help me in my moment of illness was they thought that the best thing they could do was to make me very comfortable while I died. Now think about that. While I died, they, and, and then they stuck me in a room. I mean, you have no idea what that was like to be in a room where, you know, you can't even get into a conversation with somebody because they're gone. You know, the people were just dying and getting wheeled out and new ones coming in. Families were crying and grieving and then leaving and then new families came in and then new people. They all just died. I don't even want to go into the smell of that room. But you've got to, you've got to develop your, your mind. This is something that people don't do. And this is something that's worth doing. Now, there are a few books. I mentioned that book, uh, uh, Bending Spoons with Your Mind and Other Miracles of Mind Power. That will help you. My book will help you to uh, organize the way you, you structure your mind. It's not going to tell you what to think. It's not going to tell you how to think. It's going to tell you how to use your mind. That's all. That's all I mean. Now you want to go, go to mojoacademy.org and you can look up that book and you'll see a short video clip there of me using my mind to make something move. No trick photography, nothing like that at all. You just take a look at it. And if you don't believe me, when you see it, send me an email and I'll talk to you about it and tell you how the whole thing, you know, I could go to the details of that because you can do it too. You can do it too. I showed my wife that, how to do that. She made something move too. And she told a friend of hers, she said, you can't do that. You see, you see how people are? You can't do that. 
You can't do that. Of course you can do that. We are, our mind is more powerful than you know. Now, in conjunction with that, there's another book, a wonderful book that is a forgotten book from the 1940s, maybe the late 30s, early 40s, which has been reissued by Mojo Academy Publishing, Mojo Brothers Press, which I think is worth a look. It's called, uh, you, it's called You Can Live Forever. Now, this is not about you know, spending the rest of your life in eternity here. You know, it's 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 a philosophical thing about what we leave behind. But uh, I, I do think that if I were to recommend two books, as I reflect back on this experience from 10 years ago, and I'm so glad that I didn't croak, because you know, then I wouldn't be here with you today. I'm so glad. Uh, just the, the two things that the two points I learned was don't let anybody stick. You see, remember, I told you the doctor was mad at me because I wasn't being ill the way she wanted me to be ill. You're not presenting properly, she said. And I was, you know, the onus is on me. I'm supposed to read medical books and know how I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm dying, for God's sake. You know, stop that, lady. You know, that's what I thought. But I, out loud, I just ignored her. And so there was no out loud. Don't let people put these ideas into your head. Just don't. OK, now, you know what I'm talking about, because you've all had people who, you've had ideas and somebody threw damp water on them. Damp water. What kind of a redundancy is it? Well, I guess it could have been ice cubes. <laughs> but somebody threw water on your idea, let's say. No, just stick to it. If it's a wrong thing for you, you'll know it. But there's no reason to walk around with other people's ideas ruling your life. And certainly if they expect you to die, I hope that you do your best to disappoint them. We're all going to do it anyway, but uh, you don't want to do it to make somebody else's schedule look good. You know, could you imagine that being so malleable that, uh, you know, we need this bed. Could you kind of like hurry up and just cease respiration? Uh -uh. So that's good. So the two books I would recommend are, uh, and you'll find them at mojoacademy.org, are uh, Spending Spoons with Your Mind and Other Miracles of Mind Power. And you can live forever. And that's a fascinating book. That is a very interesting philosophical take. Now, it's from a religious point of view of a, a religion that I do, to which I do not adhere, but I understand, you see. Because all religions, to me, there's a validity in there. I explain it thusly, I always have. I'm in New York. You're in California. And we want to meet in Wyoming. I head west, you head east. We are walking in opposite directions, but we're going to end up in the same place. So you see, that's that's the way it goes. There are different methods of getting to the same place. And, and, and so take a look at these books. I, I think you'll find them very helpful. And if you get them, you'll see this at mojoacademy.org where the books are listed. If you get, uh, if you get them through, you forget, you can get them through Amazon, but they cost more. Uh, I, I do them through Amazon because that's how people prefer to buy them, believe it or not. But you can get it for less money at uh, mojoacademy.org. And you can get 15% off by using the code WELCOME15. You'll find all that there at that website. You check out code WELCOME15. So you'll save money and you'll, 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 Maybe get some uh, advice. That's the best I can do. I, I don't tell people what to think. I don't tell people how to think. I never even use the tarot cards to tell people what to do. Uh, regular listeners will know that. So I just wanted to mark this anniversary of my, first of all, I'm stubborn, so I didn't die. You know, wouldn't you feel the same way? Somebody took it for granted that you were going to drop dead any minute now, and they're watching you waiting to change the linen. You know, no, 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 that's, that's rude. And so, no, I didn't do it. I didn't, I did not die. And uh, I missed a bunch of shows back then, but I was still here. Don't let them talk you to death. You ever hear that expression? No, oh, the guy just talked me to death. Well, that's what some doctors can do. There's the thing called placebo, which is, uh, you can find something about that at my website, magic-works.com. But there's also a more, less common thing the opposite, it's called nocebo. That's what the doctors have called it. And it comes from a doctor who uh, unfortunately diagnosed terminal throat cancer in a man. And of course, the man went home and dutifully wasted away and died. 
uh, then at the autopsy, the doctor uh, wanted to study the tumor. And he found there was nothing. He had no throat cancer. He had nothing wrong with him. The doctor talked him into dying. And they call that nocebo because people can talk you, people can literally talk you to death. So it's very important that you firm up your own mind power, get strong. And part of that is meditation because that increases the way your mind works. It's, the mind power is infinite, folks. You can move things with your mind. I am telling you this. I've done it. I've got a raw video. I didn't edit it. I did nothing showing me do it. And I want you to see that too. So now keep those in mind those two books, You Can Live Forever and Bending Spoons with Your Mind or Other Miracles of Mind Power. So let's get to the readings now. I, I'm just so happy to celebrate a uh, 10th anniversary of not being dead. <laughs> that, uh, I went a little overboard here, but we'll make up for that with some really good readings. How's that? I'm going to ring a bell three times now and declare a sacred space. And now we're going to uh, take the first call from probably the most poetic thing I've ever said being on this show, Dawn in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Hi, Dawn. You're on with Reverend Elliot. Hello, Reverend Elliot. Hi, Dawn in Charlotte, North Carolina. Just sounds beautiful, you know? <laughs> just sounds like it makes, <laughs> makes me just want to go, you know? I mean, uh, I, I keep hearing now. Now I'm hearing Jolson singing, nothing can be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning, you know? So, but... <laughs> Dawn in Charlotte, North Carolina. Boy, that that's that just sounds refreshing. So, especially wow. when you live in a canyon like I do. So, what can I look at for you tonight, Dawn? Well, I am calling regarding a very. Um, I'm calling about a person. Would you like their name? Uh, no, it's not necessary if you don't want to. It it doesn't matter. Um, okay person's name is Mark, and okay. we have known each other for almost five years, albeit long distance, mm -hmm. and um, it's a very um, intense connection that appears to have um, gotten more intense this year after, anyway, I just wanted to know if you could give me any enlightenment, because it's complex. But it's powerful. Okay. Um, have you had a face-to-face -face meeting in person yet? No, but there is a possibility in December. But because of it being somewhat of a... Um, it, it's one... It's, it's like when you meet some people, they can be people that mirror you. And it could be someone that holds a mirror to you, it could mm -hmm. be someone that helps you grow and evolve. And it triggers, you trigger each other and it makes it more difficult, but all the more meaningful. And so there, it's not easy, but it's more meaningful. And that's what I need help with. Well, what I've got here are, they're very interesting cards, but they're, they're kind of up and down, you know. I've got the Page of Cups. That's about a, a new relationship. That's a relationship that's uh, in it's it's in its not in its formative stages. It's completed. It's beyond that. You know, it's like it's real. It's here now. Uh, the Devil card is here. Now that's not bad. Okay, that's not that's that's not one of those. You know, it's not an evil card. I know that the movies use that card about evilness. What that is is that it's more about that, transformation, you know, isn't it? Well, it's dealing with a, a, a very uh, um, charismatic person, an attractive person, a person who is who's usually the center of attention. And they don't necessarily seek the center of attention. Some people just draw that. You know what I mean? Uh, the, 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 the only warning here is not if I mean, again, because there's so much mythology around devil. Right. But in the tarot scheme of things. Uh, it shows two people chained to the block on which the devil in the card is sitting. And that means to not, that means to be careful that you don't give over your whole life to that person. That, you know, you don't subsume, 
your needs only in favor of that person because these are very powerful people. They can be very profitable to be around and very gratifying in many ways. You know what I'm talking. I'm not talking about evil here. I'm talking about an, an, uh, an overwhelming feeling that you have when you're with the person that you can lose yourself and you probably don't want to lose yourself. Am I right? Absolutely. You want to enhance each other. Yeah. So just be that that's just there. That, so this is telling me that you that the relationship is here. There is a real thing between you that uh, there that this is a very compelling person. This is a person who you find ex is extremely attractive in many ways. It just uh, that's not about looks even, you know, only that. No, uh, no, not at all. Uh, there are people like there just are people like and you you know you'll hear people saying i i'd walk to the ends of the earth for that person you know that's that it's like that you know there there are some people who have that that ability with people and they have a responsibility not to abuse that the next card is the moon which is a card of intuition and unconsciousness uh in ter in terms of uh the, the the other levels of the mind and this is telling me that you should be very clear about your feelings. Uh, and it may speak to you in dreams also. I don't get that card very often. It's it's an interesting card. And by the way, I've got five cards well, here and three of them are insight, nature cards. We are both enamored by the moon. Just letting oh, you, good. Just letting you okay. know. That's, that's, see, that's fascinating that that would come in. And then the next card. I also card know is, that it's about, you know, your your hidden self as well. The next is the lovers, the card. Now that's another card that has been ruined by movies. You know, <laughs> the lovers card signifies not, it, sometimes it's just face value. It's about romance. Mostly it's about a choice. It's about, you're going to be facing a choice in this, which is um, a choice between, in its bluntest terms, the card represents choice between the sacred and the profane. You're not, you know, but it's never, it never really works out that black and white. I mean, let's face it. If there was a choice that was that easy to make, we will, we wouldn't even be needing cards. You know, we could, we could do these things, but it's just that, that you're going to make, there's going to be a point where you're going to have to make a decision about this relationship. The only advice I can give you is the next card is the three of cups, which is a, cups again, a romance cups are about emotions. See, this is bracketed by the page of cups and the three of cups. So the cards are responding to what you're asking, which is about romance. The three of cups is the, the, the uh, uh, Romani uh, description of that is generally the completion of a matter in, in fulfillment and in plenty. Uh, sometimes it refers to something happening because of friends through people you know. But the thing is, threes are completion. Now, what this is telling me is that you, you're going to be making a choice about this relationship. Uh, this is not, this isn't going to be too much help to you, except it's going to be reassuring. Let me put it that way. I see that whatever choice that you do make will be the right choice. Okay. I don't feel it's my choice at this point. Well, that's see, that's the, that's the, part of the devil card, which is the person is very, is overwhelming in a sense. You know what I mean? It can, can, can feel like you're compelled to do these things. And again, it doesn't mean you're being drawn into evil. You know what I mean? It's just, oh, you know, I know that. And, and, and if that's what you want to do, yeah, you know, but, but all I'm saying is that the, 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 the lover's card indicates a choice in the offing and that, uh, and from what I see, you're going to make the right choice. So if you're concerned about making a mistake, I would say don't be con too concerned about that. Trust, trust your inner intuition, which is the moon, right? But right now, you've been in contact with a very, I don't want to say, you see, it's hard to find a word that, I don't want to take it as a negative thing, an overwhelming person. Uh, and, and that's not necessarily bad. You know what I mean? It's, it can be a glorious thing. Uh, well, if so, I could add, add to my query, I don't yeah. know if he's going to be able to open his heart enough to finally let me in. Well, there you go. That's, that, that's, that's, that's what you're going to have to decide about, I'll bet. 
you know, you have to make a decision about where you're going to go and what you're willing to accept and what you're willing to not have or what you're, you know, or that you may look, you may have everything, right? But you, you have, you need more experience with the person. But what I see is you, is the choice you make is going to be okay. You're going to be, see here, I've got the 10 of cups. That's a card of the cups again. You see, it's a card of happiness. You're, you, whatever way this turns out, you're going to be okay. You're going to come out all right. All right. You, you know, you're going to, you have to figure out what you want, what you, what you're willing to pay for it in that sense. You know, everything has a cost, right? Uh, or it's all benefit. Whichever way you look at it, the decision that you're going to have to make is if you keep this going after you, you spend some time as, as people together, that would be, then you'll get the answer to your question. Will he be able to open up and let you in? Okay. Okay. But please understand that what I'm saying here, although it doesn't sound particularly helpful, I guess, is that you're not going to make the wrong choice. Like I said, I don't feel like it's my choice at this point. He's well, dealing it, with a lot and right. got a relationship that's been pretty much over for a year. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's about me permeating his heart. Well, and that's what I guess I wanted I guess, I guess to the know choice is, about. The choice is whether or not you want to continue. You know, again, I, I just I shuffle them up. I don't care to do it with anybody else. Well, I have the Ace of Cups here. Again, you're getting cup cards, so the cards are responding. This is this this tells me that you you have a big heart, and the Temperance card is here. So what you're looking for is the balance. Temperance is about balance. Right now, you feel that the relationship is not quite balanced. Am I correct? It, it ebbs and flows. Like oh. It's like three steps forward, one step back. <laughs> You know, well, you're you're working through all that. These long distance things can be very difficult, right? You, this is you know that's that's the uh, that's part of the, uh, the the price we pay for the modern communications. But I do see. Let me put it this way: I don't I see nothing but happiness in your future. I see not, I see the sun. I see the ten of cups. I see all kinds of happy stuff here. Balance, which is the temperance card. So that's what that's what's telling me is that you will be able to allow this to develop and see where it goes and you will make the right decision for you. I know I will, but I don't know if he will. Well, that would be his concern at that point, wouldn't it? See, I the, let me put it this way. I have another card here that's telling me this. You're at a point of change right now. Mm -hmm. This card this card indicates that one part of your life may be coming to an end and another part is beginning. Okay. And yeah, well, the question then is, is this going to be with this person or without? And right. and, 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 and you have conflicting feelings. I have the chariot here. That's a person who's holding two conflicting feelings on course and try to get it moving. But I have I have faith that you can get it done and, and do what's best for you. Here, I got it again, the Ten of Cups. The cards are still saying that you, this is what's going on, but there is happiness in your future. You will make the right decision, okay? So nothing showing how he truly feels about me. All I'm seeing now is you. Thank you. Okay, so just hang in there and see what develops and see how you feel and see where it's going. Um, the only thing I see about him is, as I said, we've got you're dealing with a powerful, uh, attractive uh, uh, person who can do a lot with you and for you, you know. Uh, and, and the question is, how far will that go, right? That's really the question with all relationships. But you happen to have uh, been in, be involved with somebody who is uh, extra special that way. You know what I mean? So see where it goes. I've got again. I have. I'm getting the same cards over and over again now, and this is odd because there's you know there's a lot of cards in the deck, and now I, I've got the lovers again. That's the card of making a choice. So when the time comes, you'll you'll make the right choice. Okay. I wish I could be more specific, but 
at least I don't see your life going down the drain. You know what I mean? I see good things coming your way. All right. Thank you so yeah. much for your time and energy. Good luck to you. Bye bye now. And let's shuffle up the cards. You're listening to Reverend Elliot's Magical Window. We look through the magical window of the tarot cards. There I am shuffling them up. And we get together every Wednesday at 11 Eastern time on the Ask One Radio Network. You can check out magic, M-A-G-I-C-K dash works dot com to see 106 pages of the things that I do. My new popular post there, if you look at the alchemy post, I've got a, uh, oh man, talk about it. See, magic is practical. I know magic is not this woo-woo kind of thing in the sky. And so you look at my page on alchemy and you'll see what I mean because I include very practical things there. One of the practical things is there was an article recently in the paper on how very expensive pasta sauce is in a jar now. Jarred spaghetti sauce can run nine, ten dollars. Uh, I show you how to make your own for under a dollar. You can find that at the alchemy page under a dollar. And you won't know the difference between that and store bought or homemade for that matter, because it will be homemade. Cheryl in Medicine Hat, Alberta is next. Hi, you're on with Reverend Elliot. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Sorry I'm glad I got on tonight. <laughs> how are you doing tonight, Cheryl? Oh, I'm pretty good. Yeah. And how are you doing? <laughs> I, I'm doing well. I'm a little chatty today, though, for some reason. I guess. Uh, oh, that's like, all right. <laughs> I guess that's pretty good if it's radio, right? <laughs> so what can I look at for you? What can we look at tonight? Oh, it just seems like everything in my life is kind of about all up in the air. And I could show you some, some guidance. So maybe just a general reading. Okay. Well, let's see. First of all, this might be helpful to you, is the Seven of Rods. That is a person who is capable of sweeping away all opposition and dealing with all problems. So you're very good at that. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's good to know. Uh, the, the Nine of Coins is here. Now, this is a person who is comfortable being alone. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're lonely. It doesn't mean that you're a hermit. It just means that you don't have to be around people all the time, that you're you're at peace with yourself. That's good. Uh, the, the high priestess card is here. That is a person who has depths that see behind what's uh, the veil, you see, depths that lead to the more important things in life. And uh, it, it's it's almost a mystical quality. So that's that's a, that's very good too. What I'm getting good stuff here from you. Um, now now I have the Ace of Coins and the Wheel of Fortune, and then are you are you looking for new work? Uh, no, I hope to retire in a couple of years. But uh, okay, well that hey, that's the I'm best job there is, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a little more financial stability, security. Yeah. Yeah. The, see, that's why I was asking, because the, the Ace of Coins is about a new stream of money coming in. Oh. And the the really? Knight of Coins is, you know, that, well, before that, though, there's the Wheel of Fortune, which says that the conditions now are going to change in your life. And that's followed by the Knight of Coins. See, that's why I asked about money. And when I see money like that coming in, it usually means a, a looking for new work. Uh, the Knight of Coins, it also means a new income stream is coming in. Now, the next mm-hmm. card, you mentioned retirement, and that's fascinating because the next card is the death card, which doesn't mean dying. That's too many movies have ruined that card. That means right. the, end yeah. of the, the end of one period of your life and the beginning of another. So that's what you're planning for is the, the new period in your life. And the Ten of Cups is here, which is a card of great happiness and joy. And that tells me that you're going you're gonna to be very well prepared for that. So the, the, yeah. main, the main concern I'm seeing with this new phase of your life that you're going to be entering is financial. Mm-hmm. And I do see that you're going to come up with some other ways of making money, of getting more oh. uh, in terms of, of, of having more income. You, the, the strength card is here too. So you're very determined and you, a person who has strength. Oh, and here's the six of rods. That's about success and triumph. He's very happy reading. It's telling me that financially you're going to get what you want. Wow. (laughs) 
And as this new and, period um, of as as this new period of your life commences, you will be prepared for it and you'll do well. Hmm. I hope that helps. Yes, it, it sure does. <laughs> it gives sure. me a little boost of confidence and um, kind of eases things a bit. Well, that's okay. you know that's the that's one of the important things that these cards do is that it 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 can show you whether you're on the right track or not. But according to this, you see that. Uh, the, when you you mentioned retiring, and that's I had already had the uh, card, the death card, about uh, one phase of life ending and another one beginning. Now, the reason, of course, that the cards don't really go into predicting death is because it's that's always there in our future. Uh, the further the way, the better, yeah. usually, you know. But uh, yeah, but you know, it, I've been reading for years and years and years, and only one time that I ever see anything that looked remotely like imminent. Uh, disastrous death and that's you know mm -hmm. that's that that was just once but uh it turned out that it was uh it, it was about somebody else it was, so I, di I didn't want to talk to the person on the air about that I, I said the cards i got to talk to you privately about this and it turned out that it, it involved her, uh, a, a child who was murdered uh, but generally oh. but that's from the all the other cards that were around it Generally, in this case, it, it's perfect. With, it, 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 can, it fits perfectly with what you said that you're be, you're going to retire, and you and that's that's yeah. the, that's a that's a wonderful new phase in life. And there you go. Mm -hmm. And and the money is what's on your mind about this, but happiness is there too. Yeah. So could the I death think card it, also be like the end of a marriage as well? There's issues well, there. It, it, <laughs> It's it, it's the end of one phase. If you were specifically asking me about a marriage, there there are other cards that directly relate to relationships and things like that. But overall, yeah. it just it really just means that the the end of one period of life and the beginning of another. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah it's it's possible, but um, you know, did you want to look at the a uh, uh, relationship specifically? Uh, yeah, maybe a couple cards on that. That'd be great. Okay. Because according to this, you're going to do fine. You're, you know, you're going to cause you're going to cause that change that you want. That's going to lead to more money coming in, and okay. you'll be prepared and happy. Okay, here we go. Not not happy stuff here though. This is the uh, the nine oh. of swords. This is a card of great pain and sorrow. Uh, yeah. Has there been pain and sorrow in the marriage? Uh, for many years already. Yeah. Okay, because that is that is easily the saddest card in the deck. Um, the next yeah. is the the Please. judgment. The judgment card is about rebirth, and the death card is there next. You see, you asked me about that, and here it is. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it could mean that this is coming to an end. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure it is too. And here's the wheel of fortune, which is about things changing. Mm -hmm. After the wheel of fortune is the four of rods, which is about happiness and contentedness. So, wow, this is pretty heavy duty. I'm surprised that, you know, you asked me if the death card could mean that, and there's that card. It's yeah. Right next to, it's next to the judgment card, too. So as this happens, it's going to lead to a rebirth for you also and a new phase in life for you. That's right. Where I'm going to be. Get my joy back and peace. And not that I don't have that now. I have wonderful family and friends. Oh, sure. I, I understand. In, yeah. The, the the nine of swords is about sorrow and sadness, and you don't want to continue mm -hmm. with that. You know why not? No. Why should you? Right? I mean, you know, we there's times when there's times when we have to suffer through something, and there's other times when we, you know, do what we have to to not. And it's mm -hmm. you know, and, and it looks to me like this the the judgment card means you know you're going to blow that horn and and be reborn and uh, started the death card means that the new phase of life begins. The wheel of fortune means that the situation is going to change and the four of rods is about happiness. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So you got it three is. major, yeah. you got three major cards in there too. So it's about an important issue in your life. Yeah. Things are going to be good for you. I think so. Yeah. I'm glad I got to talk to you tonight. <laughs> My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Call again some other time. I sure will. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> bye bye now. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. And let's shuffle them up. Uh, see, that's fascinating. You know, this is what I mean. But some people believe the tarot cards are alive. 
a lie, literally a lie. So the question is, could that card also refer to the marriage? And then I read about the marriage, and there's that card. You know, unreal, huh? I never. I've been doing this for ten thousand years. It feels sometimes, but I never take these cards for granted. Deborah in Delaware is next. Hi, Deborah. You're on with Reverend Elliot. Hi, Elliot. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you tonight? Good, thanks. Great. What can I look at for you? Well, I want to take a look at um, finances. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Well. The first card I've got is the Nine of Cups, and that's a card of joy and enjoyment and satisfaction and happiness, followed by the Ace of Coins, which is a, a, a new source of money coming in. Uh, that's that's a good one, you know, for, for finances. Um, the Wheel of Fortune, I, I get that a lot today. That The situation, whatever situation you're in now is going to be changing. Oh, the six right. of coins. The six of coins is a card of philanthropy. The six of co coins is a card about getting money, about somebody laying some cash on you here. Uh, now, that could be a gift or it could be work. You know, it's, there's money coming your way there. And the more important card to you know, the selling some properties. Oh, boy, there you go. <laughs> You're going to do all right with that, according to this. My favorite card here, though, is the Ace of Swords, because the Ace of Swords is about a, you, your mind is expanding. Your mind is growing. You're changing the way you think and see the world. Am I correct? A hundred percent, Elliot. I have to. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, there it is. You're Absolutely. Doing really, and you're doing really well with that, according to this. And that's going to give you the things that you want. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the, that's the, 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 the Knight of Coins is here. The two of coins, uh, the, the, the the seven of coins, all these coins. Yeah, you, money, right? It's coming. The money's yeah. coming. Uh -huh. yeah. The, yeah. You're surrounded, you're surrounded by money. You're surrounded by money cards. So, yeah, you're going to do all right. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, because I'm auctioning off some properties and just, you know, re really trying to restructure my finances. And, uh, yeah, it's been a learning experience. So, yeah, my whole outlook has changed. Well, here's the page Even, of coins um, again. Hmm? Here's the page of coins. That's the beginning of the actual appearance of money. So it's not like the knight of coins is theoretical. The page means it's here. So, yeah, you're going to do all right money-wise. Okay, and I, yeah, I, shuffled, I shuffled up the cards, and here it is again, the ace of swords and the six of coins. There's, yeah, there's there, no, no doubt about it. There's money coming your way. Yeah, thank God. Uh, let me ask you now, because um, the ex-husband is coming home from jail. I really don't want him here with me, mm -hmm. but he has no place else to go. Uh, how is that going to work out for me, Elliot? Uh, well, you know, if you don't want that, is there anything you can do? Is there any uh, legal action you could take? Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, I will. It's just, you know, I'm just going to help him get on his feet and everything like that. And, um, yeah, and then what? get um, seniors to the housing. Well, you see, I've got the two of swords, which is about kind of like a, a situation that isn't going anywhere. It's like a stalemate situation. So be careful that it doesn't become something sticky, you know, that uh, that you get stuck in. That, that's it. Other than that, I, I mean, the cards I see looking into ahead for you, four of rods, I keep getting that today. It's happiness, happy home, especially. And the sun, which is healing and health and growth and happiness. Um, oh, you, you know, do I have to tell you this again? The six of coins. It's the third time it's shown up when I shuffle the cards <laughs> in for you. That, that is the card that you take a look at it. So it shows a person handing out money. You know, I mean, this is, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to do well with these, uh, the sales, according to this. Uh, but with the situation you're right. talking about, it's like just a, a warning to just be careful that it doesn't become a, a, a situation you're stuck in. Yeah, I've been stuck for 36 years and um, <laughs> I just well, want to be free, but I'm going to push. You know, push him to. He's at the age where he can get um, senior citizen housing, his social security. So that's what I'm going to push him toward. 
Okay. For sure. Well, I certainly I hope my time. I certainly hope he's doing better. I mean, obviously he's had a terrible experience, but uh, and so have you. Uh, I, I I just yeah. I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll, after the show, I'll light a white candle to send positive energy for both you uh, and, and him, okay? Thank you, Elliot. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And you know something? That Ace of Swords is very important because your mind is changing and growing and expanding, and, and, and it's the beginning of new thoughts and ideas. And that's that's a, a very difficult time for a lot of people. I used to, I joke about the, you can always tell when you're growing as a person because you lose all your friends, you know. <laughs> so absolutely, uh, and, I, and I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's the main thing. So hang in there, okay? okay but you'll, thank you, Elliot. You'll be thank doing you so fine. much. One last card here okay, again: the the you. ace of, the ace of coins. That's the appearance of money. See, money's all around you. I should get to know you, right? Oh, you. <laughs> Thanks <Yeah>. for calling. <laughs> I got to run. Thank you, Elliot. Have a good evening. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay. Bye bye now. Okay, bye bye. And that's it. We've come to the end of another edition of Reverend Elliot's Magical Window. Wow, interesting calls tonight, huh? That was really that's really something. So uh, remember now, I, I, I gave you that long talk about a couple of books that will be really good in in terms of mind expanding which would be uh, Bending Spoons with Your Mind and Other Miracles of Mind Power. And You Can Live Forever is the subtitle of the book. Uh, uh, it's called There Is No Death. You Can Live Forever. So uh, that's, those, are, those are philosophical and practical books at the same time. And I, I, I hope you maybe find something else that would be of, uh, of help. At, we'd like to say at mojoacademy.org, there is a book here that will change your life. And uh, they're not all books that I've written. There's a lot of them are books that were uh, forgotten, neglected, or as Edgar Allan Poe once referred to them as uh, quaint and curious volumes of forgotten lore. And you can do that at mojoacademy.org, magic-works.com, M-A-G-I-C-K-works.com is my website with 106 pages of all kinds of information and uh, free stuff and things to do and all of that. So I am going to bid farewell now and remind you once again that who you are is the universe's gift to you. Who you become, well, that's your gift back to the universe. Bye-bye now.